Hello fellow YouTubers and Honda 1800 fanatics, Honda Goldwing fanatics. Um, yeah, this is my 2018 Honda Goldwing model for those that are new to my vlog. It's um, the manual edition and yeah, even though I wanted the DC TV automatic edition, um, it's it was um, a good trade-in deal in the end that I got for, for my previous bike for this as a demo model so because the trade-in was so good I couldn't resist it so anyway while I would prefer a DCT there's absolutely nothing wrong with the manual the manuals fine um, although given the choice of course I'd go for the DCT but it's personal preference as well um, so here it is just a quick bike walk around then I'm going to start with a hints and tips which I try to start all my vlogs with only this time I'll probably break the vlog into two separate videos so you know hopefully I can keep them both 15 minutes each so there will be a sequel to this particular vlog the first part is the bike walk around and the hints and tips and the second part will just be the ride on the way home I'm in Australia it's the state of New South Wales on the central coast so yeah right over there you can see the beach it's um, Patagong beach I think it's called no sorry Patonga you can see the sign up there and it's very beautiful if you go over the crest but yeah I might show I might insert a scenery shot but back to the bike anyway Yeah, so the ride will be my journey home it's partly through mountains so all you're gonna see is trees and windy roads but yeah I'll try to pick some of the more scenic shots so you can see what Central Coast is all about in northern New South Wales so all right let's start on tips and hints and tips that I can remember as I go through them um, I better turn the bike off or I'll end up with a flat battery that's not good I've done that before so actually that that's a good intro while I'm on the subject um, I did end up with a flat battery and what had happened was um, excuse me while I fumble around just adjust the tripod that I've got on the camera is getting in the way so excuse me so what, what happened was I went into my favourite electronics store and I left the bike on. I forgot to turn the knob. It's just a bad habit you can get into quite easily with gold wings. So always remember to switch the ignition off. It beeps to, I think it gives you time to lock the bike um, and then it's off. But I'd left mine on. Spent a couple of hours browsing in the shop, got back and tried to turn it on. Nothing happened. The front blinkers did flash though. I think it was trying to tell me that I had a flat battery. And at the time I wasn't sure what was going on because it was totally unexpected on my part. Um, I hadn't, hadn't realised that I'd left the ignition on and the battery had died, the headlamp had gone out. Um, so yeah, if you ever come to your bike and you twist it and nothing happens or you might get your flashing front emergency indicators, chances are you've got a flat battery. So 
I'm going to show you how you might prepare for that um, once I show you what accessories I carry with the bike so as as I ride this I get more used to it and and I think more about the essentials that you want to carry on the bike based on the stock luggage space of course if you always want more luggage space you can strap something down on the pillion seat if you don't have a pillion but I've decided that um, in my case I'm going to dedicate the right pannier just for all the accessories I need in case of breakdown so I've actually as you can see dedicated this space for all sorts of odds and ends and that's it that's that's what it's going to be I mean you've got limited space you make the best of it you buy everything as small as possible and you take what you need for the long journey so I'll just set up the tripod again excuse the clicking noise and I'll show you what I've got so remember my right pannier is purely dedicated for odds and ends and it's always going to have them in there in case of emergency so um, yeah there's no way around that so then that just leaves the left pannier and and the, the bonnet or boots for luggage which is okay it does work out because you swap you swap um, the luggage in the in the boot section with your helmet and jacket when you finish riding so helmet and jacket out luggage in and then luggage luggage out and helmet and jacket back in so so that rear boot that's how I use it. The left pannier would be for any other additional luggage that I wanted to carry. And the right pannier, what do I have? Well, I have a summer jacket because um, it's a protective summer jacket which you need. It's got lots of ventilation. And I ride with a winter jacket and if it gets hot, I just swap it out for the summer jacket so I reckon that's a must. You don't want to get too hot and you don't want to get too cold when you're riding. They're, they're both crucial factors when it comes to riding fatigue. The other thing I bought myself was these... Um, uh, this is an RJ's brand. Not that I'm advertising the brand, but it's very compact um, rain gear. So I've got... Um, I won't open it up, but you can see how big the big the bags are and I've got pants in one and jacket in the other and they are good quality but they also compress quite nicely and that's exactly what you want rain gear because you never know when you're going to get caught the next thing you should have just get yourself a small first aid kit it can be even smaller than this if you want um, yeah because you just never know and then um, for those that have seen my previous vlogs, I did introduce this Weera Cyclops screwdriver and ratchet system, which is really good. Um, the reason I like this one is it's got all the extensions and it's got the hex attachments, which will fit most of the hex bolts on the bike. And it's got some basic... Um, ratchets as well so and it this is it's not it's a kind of expensive accessory to have but it's it's Vera they stay W's are pronounced V in German but it's a German engineered kit it's very high quality very robust very small um, but it's engineered it really is nothing slips um, it'll probably last forever as well so I'd, I'd recommend something like this. Um, Vera products are really good. So there's my little toolbox. The other thing is I've got... Uh, this is a Dyna plug. This particular one is... If you have a flat tyre, you can use this particular Dyna plug to repair it. And that, that will do for... Um, a motorbike tyre repair as well as a car repair because it's got this big 
circle pressure point here which is good for inserting the actual plug if you don't know what Dyna plugs are just YouTube it and do a bit of homework but essentially it's a permanent repair that you can do on the side of the road and you don't need to call for help you can just get a flat tie remove the object the nail or whatever it happens to be and just plug it with that and it's a permanent fix so that's a must I do have the other model Dyna plug so the car one I'm going to put in the car and I'll just keep this with the motorbike and with this I've got um, the Dyna plug itself which is a motorbike version it's got a rubber end and, and you push the plug in that way when you're repairing the tyre and that is also I've put, put it in a little bag with some CO2 cylinders and I've got the attachment so that um, if you do get a flat tyre you remove the object I've got three compressed air cylinders which should get enough air in the tyre so that I can get to a petrol station and top the remaining air and then with the kit I've also got these pinch applier multi-tool um, so that I can use a plier bit to remove the object so this is a must the other one it's personal preference I prefer this because it's a bit more compact but the other one will do car tires as well so um, yeah do your homework see which one you like the best the other thing I've got in here are um, these are just like boot stockings or boot socks or they just go if you don't want to get your feet wet while you're riding you just slip those over over the bottom of your trousers it covers half your boot and it stops your boot from getting waterlogged so that's another little accessory and in future vlogs we'll talk about um, we'll talk about how to deal with things like um, a flat battery so what you're probably going to need is I think a multimeter so I'll show you what I'm talking about we'll go up to the battery section so if you do get a flat battery a, a battery is meant to have something like I think it's 12.6 volts on it so um, when I had a flat battery it was running at um, sorry I've got a the tripod thing again it was running at Oh, it had about four point something volts in it, which pretty pretty much means it's it's dead, basically. So it doesn't have to be zero volts. Volts. It's I think it's pretty much anything under 12, 12 volts. Um, you know, it, it's questionable whether or not it can be recharged and whether it has enough voltage to start the bike. But certainly once you get down to less than 5 volts, you can forget about it, you'll need a new battery. So, one thing I've got in here, you can buy charger accessories that attach to the battery, so I could run a voltmeter, positive and negative, into here and that would tell me the voltage. Um, but what, I, what I'm really trying to work out is, what I can do if I get a flat battery on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere, so what I'm thinking of, there are these, um, they look a bit like mobile phones, but they're battery jump starter packs. And you can carry one of those and you can literally, if you get a flat battery, attach it and jump start the bike. Um, it's not, not a guarantee that, you know, if your battery's dead flat, it will keep running, but in theory it should. So that's one option, um, so I'll probably get one of those, so if you do break down, you've got to get the seat off, so I might cover that in another video, but you've got to take the seat off so you can, you can get to the battery, but um, 
actually you can I think if you just remove this panel um, so this this will come down you move this panel here I don't even think you need to take the seat off this there is a brace that holds the battery in and you can just take these two off and get the battery out so um, yeah put a hold on that removing the seat thing I, I don't think you need to do it from memory so um, the other option I was thinking of when I you know when you do get a new battery I'm gonna use the lithium batteries a because they're much lighter and B because they they work better when they're undercharged or you know they don't have to be the standard 12.6 volts with a lead acid battery sorry lead acid battery um, the lithium ones actually when they're under voltage they just work better and they, they charge themselves up and they're really light so the other option is instead of carrying a jump starter battery with you the, these compact ones you can buy you could just carry a spare lithium battery because they're so light so I haven't decided yet I'm still thinking about that one what might make me decide which one to get is how long a lithium battery could sit there and still still be okay I mean you might have to charge it occasionally so that gets around that problem but getting a jump start um, battery pack it's, it's, it's about the size of the mobile phone a bit bigger is slightly more compact and if that can jump start a flat battery then that's probably the option I'll go for if anyone can tell me whether or not that that will always work regardless of how flat your battery is um, then I'll probably go for that option but if, if it's something like oh, once it gets under 2 volts or something it won't jump start then I'll probably just carry a spare lithium battery but anyway stay tuned I'll let you know what I decide I've just got to do a bit more homework in, in that area but I do recommend it it's just a question of time before you get flat battery if it happens when you're close to home it won't be a problem but if you're out in the sticks um, yeah, you can call roadside assist, um, assuming you've got mobile reception. You know, Australia's a big place, so <laughs> I prefer to be as self-sufficient as possible. But yeah, if that doesn't work, wave someone down or call mobile assist. Um, yeah, and then the other tip I can give you, I think this is the final tip before we go for a ride. I've had a few inquiries about a ram mount, so this is my ram mount. And that holds my mobile phone so um, these this is quite good in that it has this this rubber brace that you just flip over to secure the battery some people don't use it that's it in the background there but I highly recommend it um, that way you'll never lose your phone no matter what the conditions are so if I take the battery out you can just see it's a round mount grip here and the way you buy RAM mounts, I think you buy them in three pieces. You buy the clamp for the phone, then you buy this ball joint clamp here with the tap on it to tighten it up. And they've got to be the same size as well, so you've got to look at the different RAM mount accessories and match them up, so you match that to that. And then I got a claw clamp. So if you look at the claw clamp, um, it takes a bit of adjusting. But if you get that as high up as possible and in the right orientation, you can see it doesn't interfere with the steering at all, and it clamps the phone quite nicely. So anyway, that's it for the hints and tips. One more um, quick look at. Tonga Beach, you can barely see it there. Um, yeah, I might insert a better shot later. Um, yeah, and stay tuned or tune into the next video for the ride. Bye for now.